Thou preparest a table before me, wild har harvest edibles, part 62. Just an important note, as you navigate any health challenge, it's always recommended that you partner with a medical practitioner that shares your philosophy of the care of the human body in disease and in health. The information shared in this presentation is meant to educate and improve your wellness toolbox and aid in returning to health if sick and maintaining good health when well. It should not be construed as medical advice, simply as tools that have been successfully used by others in similar situations. As always, investigate and verify any treatment, protocol, or procedure for yourself, not blindly accepting anything without due diligence. Thomas Edison said the doctor of the future will give no medicine, but will instruct his patient in the care of the human frame, in diet, and in the cause and prevention of disease. In 1885, this statement was made, There are many ways of practicing the healing art, but there is only one way that heaven approves. God's remedies are the simple agencies of nature that will not tax or debilitate the system through their powerful properties. Pure air and water, cleanliness, a proper diet, purity of life, and a firm trust in God are remedies for which the want of thousands are dying. Yet these remedies are going out of date because their skillful use requires work that the people do not appreciate. Fresh air, exercise, pure water, and clean sweet premises are within the reach of all, with but little expense, but drugs are expensive, both in the outlay of means and the effect produced upon the system. And much further removed from that, 3 John 1 verse 2, back in Bible times, Beloved, I pray that you may prosper in all things and be in health, just as your soul prospers. And in Romans, Paul states, I beseech you therefore, brethren, by the mercies of God, that you present your body as a living sacrifice, holy, acceptable to God, which is your reasonable service. And do not be conformed to this world, but be transformed by the renewing of your mind, that you may prove what is that good and acceptable and perfect will of God. In Councils and Diet, page 56, the statement is made, As regards our responsibility and influence, we are amendable to God as deriving our life from Him. This we do not obtain from humanity, but from God only. We are His creation, and by redemption. Our very bodies are not our own to treat as we please, to cripple by habits that lead to decay, making it impossible to render to God perfect service. Our lives and all our faculties belong to Him. He is caring for us every moment. He keeps the living machinery in action. If we were left to run it for one moment, we should die. We are absolutely dependent upon God. Our first plant today is a continuation of our seaweed series here. Uh, it was Porphyra, or Pyropia species, also commonly known as nori or laver. On the right picture is how it would appear in its natural setting on rocks. It's found around the world as an annual <clears throat> on the west coast of North America. It uh, grows on rocks or other hard surfaces. And you can see how thin it is in the bottom picture. It's only one cell layer thick, the red algae there in the picture. There's also a green algae called sea lettuce in the background. But the red uh, nori or porphyra is what we're focusing on today. The tidal zone it grows in it can grow up to 30 feet deep. It's uh, red algae, so it's absorbing and reflecting uh, red light from mid to low tide, depending on the water conditions or the clarity of it. So the more clear the water, the deeper it can grow. The hold fast in this type, the, the hold fast is a very small disc shaped uh, hold fast, which is most of the time not even seen because we find it uh, just drifted up on the beach uh, or clinging to the rock, but not right down to the hold fast level. There's no apparent type, it goes straight to the blade. The blade or frond of the entire plant essentially is, is edible because there is no stipe to speak of. It goes directly from the, from the hold fast. The best time to harvest it is in the spring and summer. And cut the blade, leaving a portion on the hold fast so it can regenerate and continue growing because it grows from the, from the hold fast and can, continues to move up. So the outer edges, as you can see on the above picture, are more tattered because it's more aged. Uh, rinse it well and air dry it before eating it and then you can toast it or roast it to bring out a sweet flavor. Like many things, <clears throat> once they've been roasted or heated or cooked, uh, the sugars break down and become more uh, more palatable that way. It can be eaten raw as any other green uh, or used and it's 
kind of paper form you see in the paper wafers below used to wrap things in or as a seasoning and one way that you can make a fresh nori seasoning is uh, get the fresh nori a pinch of paprika and a pinch of salt wash the nori thoroughly and dry it overnight and then toast or roast it for 10 to 30 minutes break it into tiny pieces like you see on the right or grind it and you can store it in a shaker to shake on for use on fresh things or even on cooked dishes Medicinally, its traditional use was to be given to women up to three weeks postpartum, so during that period of time. So lots of minerals and blood can be lost during the birthing process and helps replace trace elements, minerals, and vitamins that are often lost there. It aids digestion. Uh, it can help control blood sugar and cholesterol levels, uh, not only in a replacement way, but also in factors that help to mitigate the uh, rise and fall of blood sugar. It's high in vitamin C and interestingly enough high in vitamin B12. So this is one of those B vitamins or vitamins that are difficult for vegetarians, um, those who are on a totally plant-based diet to obtain, but this is a source. Seaweed, another great source is chlorella, uh, which is a green algae as well from a freshwater source, but it has uh, less iodine than other types of seaweeds. The high vitamin C content helps the body to absorb its correspondingly high iron content. And that's another thing that postpartum women, those who have bled even after a period, have uh, anemia associated with low iron count in their blood. So this can help replace that. The next is actually a grass, but it's also from the sea. You can see the high surf in the back. The name of this is surf grass. Its scientific name is Phyllospadix. It grows worldwide. It's uh, common on the West Coast, coast the Gulf Coast, and nor the Northeast Coast of the United States of North America. It's a perennial. It's very thin. It grows on rocky areas and actually attaches to the rock. It prefers non-sedimented areas. It also will grow on rocky tide pools that don't have sand or sediment that have encroached in the bottom of it. So unlike eelgrass, which we'll look at next, uh, it, which prefers soft sediments, the surf grass does not. It attaches directly to the rocks. The tidal zone, it likes turbulent areas, hence the picture of the waves and the crashing waves. Surf grass is another, just another indicator of where it grows. Um, and between the low and the high in the subtidal zones, so it's going to be lower in the intertidal zone, and it grows to 16 to 50 feet below the surface. The stem and the leaf, it grows from a rhizome-like stem that attaches to the rock. It has a cylindrical sheath stem and thin grass-like blades that are unbranched. The flat leaves can be 3 to 10 feet long and are very much narrower than eelgrass, about a sixth of an inch wide. And they can be from wiry to smooth and have serrated edges sometimes, depending on the species. The lower right picture, you can see some of the flower, the flower of the surf grass, and from there the seeds will form. Uh, the flower is near the base of the plant and ends uh, on the ends of the stem from three quarter to four inches long. It has a pea pod like swelling, uh, has a row of seeds inside of it and it flowers early in the summer. And it actually ends up with heart-shaped eighth inch long seeds that are winged. Now it doesn't actually get wind dispersed, it's water dispersed, but the, those wing shapes can help in the, in the dispersal of the seeds. The fresh new leaves are the edible part of the surf grass. You can see it, an underwater picture here of the surf grass. <clears throat> this particular area has some sediment around it, but it must have started while it was on a rocky surface. Uh, you want to harvest it early in the spring before it flowers. Cut the leaves above the sheath so it can continue growing. And uh, the stalks themselves can be tough, so keeping the up, or upper tender leaves is preferable. The new growth can be steamed or blanched. So in this dish here, it's added to this noodle dish as a green portion, along with some lettuce in this particular example. Uh, but one cup of surf grass, a cup of chopped broccoli, um, half an onion diced, a teaspoon of soy sauce, and a pack of instant noodles of your choice, ramen for example. Pre-soak those noodles for about two minutes, and then saute in water with the onion, the broccoli, and the soy sauce. Then add your noodles and stir fry one minute, and then add your surf grass at the very end and you have surf grass noodles. 
eelgrass, Zosta marina, forms vast beds in areas with soft sediments and estuaries. Uh, it actually ends up being the nursery of the sea. Many, many organisms, crabs and herring, will raise their young or, or uh, have their young, lay their eggs in the eelgrass beds, and they're often found in estuary areas, and then they will go from there out into the uh, open oceans and intertidal areas. It's also known as sea rack. Uh, it grows worldwide in cooler waters, and it's present both on the east and the west coasts of North America. It can form large meadows and soft sediments, as you can see in the picture above. Very large areas covered with it. Uh, it does like to have the soft sediments, either sand or mud. And the rhizome is embedded in that, and it propagates like many land-based grasses. The underground stem or rhizome is... Uh, collected and eaten. It's one of the parts that is eaten. It has a sugarcane-like fibrous texture to it, uh, but is sweet. So the flowering plant, it's a flowering plant. Uh, it's a perennial. It can have an annual cycle where uh, it has extreme environmental conditions associated with it, but typically it's in perennial. Calm bays with soft sediments are its preferred habitat areas. It prefers extreme low tide in subtidal zones, and it uh, prefers to not be exposed to the air. It only happens you know, periodically in the winter when it's dark, which is no problem for it. But in the summertime, the extreme minus tides will expose it, but that's a very short period of time over the course of the entire year cycle. So it's a flowering plant again. <clears throat> it has flowers and seeds, but they're not obvious. You can see the swelling of the seeds here in the two right pictures. That's where the basically the leaves are just swelling and the seeds develop just underneath the, the layers of the, of the leaves. And that flowers underwater in the spring and the small seeded tentacles can be up to a third of an inch uh, long and then break off and float away to the surface and then splits and releases those seeds. The brant, the goose-like bird here in the center picture is one of its favorite uh, foods is the seeds of the eelgrass. The leaves and the stems, that is the underground rhizomes, are the edible portions of the eelgrass. So harvested above the sheath, um, early spring and pre-flowering or after flowering in the summertime, you can harvest. Harvest at the lowest tides seasonally. You can do it from a snorkel or from a boat. It's possible when the water is shallower, uh, but uh, perhaps more difficult depending on the conditions of the of the sediments that it lives in. It grows in relatively calm waters. Of course, shallow water will have white caps and waves quicker than deep water. <clears throat> so just uh, use caution when harvesting. You want to avoid harvesting it during the seed formation. Wait until after that has occurred or before it has occurred. So the rhizomes are best uh, either raw or blanched, slightly slightly heated. And they have a sweet texture to them. They're very fibrous, um, but you can uh, chew that like you would sugar cane. Eelgrass salad. Uh, you can make a salad with two cups, cups of lightly blanched eelgrass, or one cup of sprouted beans or other sprouts of your choice, sliced up carrot, uh, some baby spinach, and then a wedge of lemon for, for dressing and then just combine all those things together and serve it as an eelgrass salad. Medicinally, it was traditionally used to limit edema or fluid retention and also used uh, today in some cosmetics. And there's an extract of eelgrass that has antimicrobial and antioxidant effects on the human body. To review this and learn more about various types of plants that are edible, and used for medicinal and culinary purposes, www.preparingforthetimeoftrouble.com.